Welcome back everyone. Today's lesson is about BAS controllers. And so really the BAS controller, we've talked about this, it's the heart, it's the, the soul of the whole BAS, the building automation system. And so we're talking about what defines it, what some of the hardware components, and then a specific framework, Niagara N4. And so this is under the parent company of Tridium. Two terms that we use hand-in-hand, uh, -hand, DDC, Digital, Direct Digital Controls, and then BAS, Building Automation Systems. So uh, there's different manufacturers, but if you understand the installation, the startup, the troubleshooting, uh, those are all the same fundamental components of the DDC or BAS controller. So here's a picture of a bunch of different ones. You got Honeywell, the Spider. Jace, you got Tridiums, um, Jace 8000, you got the Allerton, uh, different brands, there's JCI, Johnson Controls, but essentially these are the, the brain of the system. So key terms as always, I'll leave those up for a second, you can pause it here if you want to read through it. The, the main one I'm going to point out is MMI, um, Man Machine Interface. So this is the communication between a binary device and humans, right? We don't understand zeros and ones, but we understand pictures and words. So what defines the controller? Simply put, a microprocessor. And in this microprocessor, we're going to have, you know, the, the, the central things that a computer microprocessor has, a CPU, a data bus, memory, BIOS, and then an MMI. And it's a direct digital, so at its most basic functioning level, this is on, one, off, zero. So we don't understand that, right? Uh, and that's why we need the MMI to convert it. So as in the key terms, we looked at the A and D conversion and the D to A conversion. So you spell it out a little uh, more in depth. So you may remember this slide, but input devices. What does the controller need to know? And this information is coming from thermostats, air sensors, water flow, uh, current transformers, inputs from different machines. Um, in this case, on this picture, it's a chiller. And so this picture, what we're looking at here is the controller receives the inputs. So these you can see in this box here, input points. And then it outputs. And this can be different things. It can be a valve, a supply fan, damper. So as I said earlier, the MMI is what really makes the controller work. This is one of the most important pieces, right? We don't understand zeros and ones. The computer could run all day without us, but we want to be involved. So the A to D converters, it, this transforms the concepts into code, right? And then the, the D to A converter is transforming that raw data into visualizations, numbers, information that we humans understand. And so to give you, you know, very easy uh, side by side, you can see all the code here. And then you can see the graphics, you know, what is behind these graphics is that code or zeros and ones and numbers that we don't understand. But when it comes into a pretty graphic like this, that we can understand. And so. A lot of the DDC controllers are going to have onboard graphical interfaces, and uh, like Niagara N4, that's the one that I'm most familiar with, that's going to have uh, built in graphics. And so when you start to get into a Honeywell or a Johnson Controls or a Distech, which is a you know, manufacturer specific controller, those graphics are going to be different between the two. So as I talked about, the Niagara N4 framework, uh, that's one of the ones I'm more familiar with. And this slide really breaks it down, right? Uh, the goal is the common language, a universal connectivity. And so we break down a little bit further the PC to JACE interface, right? Uh, as humans, you know, we want to do all the programming from a PC that we're plugged into the JACE. You don't want to sit there on a punch pad and program. You know, a computer makes that a lot easier. A workbench is the Jace's engineering tool, and so all these manufacturers are going to have maybe their different version of workbench or their programming tools, uh, but the, the, the Jace usually comes with a minimal shell operating system, um, and then as the programmer, you're going to dive a little deeper into that. Then you got the plate, pla the platform. This is the Jace's skeleton, right? 
This is uh, the structure where the station hangs out. And hopefully we dive a little bit deeper into this uh, so you can start to get a little better understanding of it. So the PC to Jace interface, here's a, a quick picture, right? We're plugging our PC into our Jace. Um, we're starting to see some graphics. Uh, the workbench, right? Here's a, a graphic of the actual startup. Niagara workbench. And then once you start diving in to the workbench engineering tool, you're gonna get what's called a wire sheet, right? This is where you start to program. If something does this, it is gonna communicate and do this. So it looks kind of like a flow chart. You've probably seen those before. Uh, that's where the wire sheet starts to come into play. And so now you heard the word station, right? This slide really breaks it down. What is this, this station? It's the heart and soul of the Jace DDC controller. And so the, the components that are involved with the station are the services, the drivers, the logic, and the support files. And so the Jace station is usually defined in a database called a .bog file, B-O-G. This file is written in Java. 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 Is that a New York accent? It's a virtual machine programming language uh, originally invented by Oracle. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Java. If not, there you go, you've heard of it now. So a trained programmer, you know, Niagara has a lot of training programs and certifications. Uh, a really good one for a programmer would be TCP certification. So they're going to be able to utilize Workbench. They're going to be able to add these services, drivers, devices, and logic to the station. If the station includes a web server, um, they got to configure that as well. So the platform, right? The platform would be, in this picture, it's the base, it's the ground, it's the foundation. So the station here, we're looking at a gas station, it is uh, based on the platform. And yeah, this slide kind of spells it out a little bit. The station runs the components of the Niagara framework and provides access for the client browsers to view and control these components. So this slide talks about the inputs and outputs. We've talked about this over and over and over, but this is what the JACE controller needs to be able to do something, right? It needs an input, which could be any of these listed, temperature sensor, and that is going to feed code to an output, whether it's analog or digital, and that's going to control something, right? So a controller overview, uh, you saw the picture, this breaks down. Um, most of the controllers you see, they, they look similar, right? Uh, a lot of times it's the same Jace controller that a manufacturer just put their branding on and then put their programming tools or uh, graphics into. So let's look a little bit closer at the station. We talked about this. This is where you're doing a unique programming for your client or your facility. And so if you're using Workbench, uh, that's the programming tool. It's loaded onto a PC. You're going to need an annual license for that to be able to uh, utilize it. Uh, or the other way is a web graphical user interface. And so the, the web GUI, GUI, some people say, that's going to be using Java. And so if you're using the, the web base, it's usually a little bit slower. Um, most programmers out in the field are going to use Workbench, but they do have the option to utilize uh, either or. So some of the things that you can do inside the uh, controller, right? Some of the services are chores, right? Um, when you're controlling the alarm, the history, the emails, the backup, the platform services, and then you get into drivers, right? Uh, depending on what you're using, most likely, or I don't want to say that, but BACnet is a very popular one. So you're going to have a BACnet driver. Uh, if you're running LawnWorks, you'd have a LawnWorks driver. Sometimes if you have um, different network protocols, you're going to be using different drivers. Uh, so typically you're going to see Niagara Network, NDIO Network, and then the back network, network right? Those are uh, three good examples. So the logic. This is the programmer's canvas. So you can see it's another picture of the wire sheet. This starts to dive into the wire sheet a little bit more. So Niagara M4 is an object-oriented programming method. 
Uh, a good example is a watercolor artist. So painting a landscape, uh, they do their work on a canvas, and this is what is called a wire sheet, to give you a reference. There's different palettes. These contain various objects to create this masterpiece, right, for your facility or your client. And basically you're taking these objects, you're placing them on the canvas, and then you're linking them to other objects. This is the inputs and the outputs, right? One input is going to be an object, and then the output is going to be a different object, and you're going to wire them together, you're going to connect them together. And then the, the painting it starts to come to life, right? And so some of the terminology that you're going to see, the, the pantry, this is where the files are stored, right? And then another term is enterprise, right? So this is if you have uh, all these different devices in one facility, now imagine you have 100 facilities across the state and you're connecting them all together, right? So that's going to be an enterprise when they all connect together. Uh, that's the end goal, right? If you can log into one, one site and be able to see 100 different sites remotely, that's going to save you a lot of maintenance time. It's going to save you uh, a lot of time, a lot of money. Uh, it's going to be a lot more efficient. Okay, so now let's actually dive into the computer and controller interface side and see what that looks like. So we've logged into the computer. Now we're going to look at some of the station and platform functions. Alright, so on the left here we're looking at the nav pane, the navigation pane, and then this area would be considered the canvas pane. So we talked about looking at some of the config files. If we drill down here we can you know, expand some of the stuff like this, or if you double click, it'll pull it into the canvas pane. And you can see some of the different services that are running, the platform services. Uh, if we wanted to dig into some of the TCP or IP address stuff, uh, you know, you can really get yourself in trouble if you don't know what you're looking at here. But we talked about alarms, right? Uh, people understand alarms, that's pretty simple. So if we expand that, you can see some of the different alarms. If we double click, you start to get in some of the details. Let's say you wanted to email alarms out, right? You'd have the address here, what you're looking to do. You'd have the time range. Um, you can get into critical alarms. You know, there, there's different ways that you would set uh, different alarms, right? Different priorities, uh, a high alert, a low alert, etc. And then here you could actually see what the alarm uh, might look like or how you would want to select the records, right? So now let's dive into user services. We'll expand that. And so we have two, two different ways to log in, right? The, the student HTML, um, this would be your web browser, GUI. Uh, let's look at auto log off period, right? We got it set for 30 minutes, okay? different settings here and now if we expand it on the Java this is where we're using the Java uh, app we got an auto log of 15 minutes right so you know very simple setting but uh, just to kind of show you how deep into the details you can get let's look at some of the drivers now so we talked about the, the three that might be on this system we have Niagara N-I-R-O and BACnet. So the N-I-R-I-O is Niagara Remote Input Output. This is what might be uh, getting our module, our I-O-34. So if you look over here, and there's our I-O-34 module. If we dig into the points here, double click this one, pull up the points in the canvas pane. So these are all the points, right? And this is live. So on this sensor, I'm going to move the set point to probably about halfway. So as we adjust this, you can actually see live time, the ohms, set points moving up and down, and then you'll actually see some of the other stuff change. See the output here has been changing a little bit. So you can see, you know, the inputs and outputs are feeding in. Um, the input, this, the, the setting that we have on this is changing the VFD, 
right, the speed of it. Let's back out of here, go into the BACnet network. So diving into the BACnet driver, we're going to see, let's drill down into fan coil unit, let's look at the points. You can see all these points now, right? I got cooling, heating, etc. So looking at the room temperature set point, 73.4, right? This is a physical analog point, and note the purple color. So we talked about the different colors, the Boolean input, the numeric input, right? Um, so you can see the colors start to uh, really identify what that object is. So the different colors we talked about, numeric, enumerated, string, Boolean. And the occupied heat set point, right? 70 degrees. This is a physical and virtual point that can be adjusted locally at the device, right? We could adjust it here, or we can adjust it or command it written by the JACE, allowing the set point to be adjusted remotely. So in the logic folder here, this is where most of the application operations are carried out. Um, so you can see the different subfolders, right? If we go into default setup, uh, here's our wire sheet we talked about. And so if you're looking at here, you can see the output. This will feed into the input. That's true. Uh, there's an output here. It feeds into the VFD hertz. So as I move this sensor up and down, it's going to change on the wire sheet. Right, so the slide output is going down, this is feeding in here, and then it's feeding out to the hertz, right? So we're at 5.1 hertz. As I bring this up, I jumped up to 12 hertz uh, based on the output here and based on the output here, right? So it's pretty cool to see it live time. If I jack it all the way up, 3.4 volts, 3.4 volts out. 20 hertz. We'll bring it all the way down, 0 volts, 0 hertz. Next thing I want to look at is the files folder. Just as we need uh, a pantry to store food or a closet to store our clothes, you know, this needs a file folder to store stuff that it needs in its daily operation, right? And so we're looking at different files here. Um, I'll click on the drawings. So there's a drawing there. Graphics. These are all the different graphics that it's going to utilize. Uh, here's a report. But yeah, this is where it's going to kind of store all those random files. And we talked about in the video in Enterprise and what this kind of looks like here. I mean, this can be in a very extensive uh, setup, right? But you got the different controllers, these could be different facilities. This is feeding into the enterprise supervisor. Now again, there, you can run different things with Niagara, right? Um, you can get into video integration, you can get into uh, lighting, you can get into security systems with key card access badges. So this should give you a good idea of the range and the power of, you know, uh, BMSs and BASs, right? Building management systems and building automation systems.